Battlefield 2042's fifth season, New Dawn, drops next week on June 7th, and the team at EA recently invited me to capture some footage to show off some of the new content, so thanks to them for providing the opportunity, but today we're going to be running down a little bit of what you can see in the upcoming season here next week. From the new map to new weapons, some additional upgrades and features adjusted and introduced for the first time, as well as my overall thoughts on what we have that we were able to play. As we go along, drop your thoughts down below. Do you want to see more Battlefield content? I've been having a lot of fun here mixing it up and playing a bunch of stuff behind the scenes, so if you guys would like to see some coverage and content on Battlefield, I'd love to share. But anyways, drop a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new, but let's get into it. Firstly, the new map. New Dawn's primary location of focus is the map Reclaimed. Lore-wise, it's a battlefield of the past reignited in conflict five years after the events of Battlefield 2042. I think comparatively, this map does a pretty good job at variance in play space while also doing its best to provide cover going from zone to zone depending on what mode you're playing. On one side, you have derailed train cars and environmental trenches to get from point A to point B. The entry into the turbine halls are probably the only like tremendously open areas where not having really a ton of cover might be a little bit problematic trying to get into there. But beyond that, you have close quarters bunkers and covered cliff sides beyond that leading to the opposite side of the map. Sizing wise, don't have the exact metrics, but I felt like it was much smaller by comparison to other maps in Battlefield 2042, which made you feel as if you were always in the action. Granted, Battlefield's thing is to often be large worlds here, but I also don't think it's bad to have smaller maps that are still massive, but by comparison to others, they're not the biggest. What I'm trying to say is that you didn't have sequences of like 30 to 60 seconds running on a hillside or being semi in the open without any combat whatsoever. It kept you in the action, but it also wasn't too overbearing unless you wanted it to be and you wanted to be in the action of everything. You still had those pockets of the map and areas where you could end up picking players off with a sniper from far. You could end up trying to flank around and not really be contested in those flank rounds. But if you wanted to be all in the action, you absolutely could be. So, Reclaimed is that new battlefield that we'll have here for Battlefield Season 5. For the new weapons, now, I might end up doing a video more specifically dedicated towards these tomorrow or sometime over the weekend. Not 100% sure just yet. I kind of like to dissect weaponry a little bit more like we do with each season of Call of Duties. These are the weapons of season or whatever we do every single season. But for Season 5, we have the XCE Bar, the GEW-46, and the BFP-50. Before we get any further into weaponry details, yes, you'll probably notice in the gameplay that there's AI mixed in with other creators and developers in this gameplay. That's just to fill these lobbies. To my knowledge, this was a relatively small scale event of probably like a few dozen creators, if I were to guess. Nothing really over the top or crazy in terms of players that you'd fill out like four, five, six lobbies of just player on player 32v32 action. But the XCE bar, I'm a sucker for sniping in Battlefield. That feeling of landing those long range headshots, the feeling of mouse and key sniping for me, I love it. I'm a bit biased, perhaps, but I did enjoy the XCE bar. It's a snappy weapon for sure, not a guaranteed one shot unless to the head. I hit markered quite a few players using it at a distance, but for the most part, if you're accurate, it won't be bad to pick up by any means. The GEW 46, this one was pretty fun to play around with. I'm a rifle main in just about any FPS game that I play, and Battlefield's no exception. The GEW 46 was a rather maneuverable weapon. I felt like I burned through ammo pretty quickly with it, but that may just be me. But it felt good, definitely still outclassed by some weapons. I was playing with the MTAR and the ACWR, a lot for general gameplay purposes, showing off as we'll touch on in just a little bit. Some of the vault weapon adjustments here do it, but definitely the ACWR outclassed it. It felt mostly on par with the MTAR, but still a solid introduction into the weaponry you have on offer. And the BFP-50, I mean, well, I mean, it's a big freaking pistol. Acting similarly to other FPS Desert Eagles, it's a one shot to the head, especially up close. I didn't really manage to test out how far that one shot range is, but it's definitely satisfying as ever to get a kill with it, especially those one taps if you can land those. So those are your weapons here of Season 5. We, of course, have a new Battle Pass coming along with Season 5 as well. Personally, I'm not really too invested into Battle Passes of really any games at the moment. Call of Duty, just because it's kind of the main, that's the only really one that I'm, like, actually not grinding out, but I'm mostly complete. For Battlefield 2042, Season 4, I didn't really care too much to finish it out. This one, there are some cool skins here throughout the Battle Pass, but again, it's probably going to be one of those things where I'm just like, eh, I'll get the free items whenever I get those free items, but that's something that on screen you'll see some scrolling of some of the items here available for that battle pass, but not staying too much on that. We also had additional upgrades and updates to the ways of the new squad management system, which is reminiscent of the squad management we've seen in the past. Vault weapons, as we mentioned, had some changes to the loadouts where there's now a growing number of vault weapons that will work with all-out warfare attachments. With season five, we saw the likes of the ACWR, M16A3, A90, M416, MTAR21, AEK971, and the Gold Sniper Magnum. All of the ability to utilize these attachments 
attachments and skins further, making them much more viable compared to before. And honestly, playing with the ACWR and MTAR, I loved both of them. I'm really happy with this change personally, getting to use some of those classic weapons here. Additionally, we'll see another rework to the map of Hourglass. This, we didn't get any hands-on time with this in particular because it's going to be coming later in Season 5, but Hourglass 2.0 is going to be coming, reducing the overall size of the map, adding more cover on the primary routes of the map. The map itself has changed to offer new sorts of points of interest per se, where the village was changed to a military fortification, the arches got an overhaul, collapsing the bridge and adding a new underground area for close quarters combat. The underpass is now littered with a ton of destroyed content. Downtown areas have a ton more covered by comparison than just the sand dunes we had before and a bunch of other stuff. So a lot of stuff here coming in, not only just the launch of season five, but beyond as well. Looking forward to seeing how this Hourglass 2.0 plays. I really did like a lot of what they did with some of the reworks for the maps in the past. So looking forward to this one for sure. They also did mention that there's going to be a mid-season event, but we don't have any information on that just yet. And the final thing that we'll talk about in regards to like support and content before we jump into my overall thoughts here is that not necessarily what we learned of in the gameplay or anything like that in hands-on time, but what was detailed in the dev blog here put out a couple of days ago is they mentioned beyond season five. So very curious to see what this will mean here. If we end up getting a full another year of support and post-launch content beyond this, we'll have to wait and see, but that's something to note that the future still is open. It's an open door here for Battlefield 2042. So if you're a fan of what they've been doing recently, I think turning around the game quite a bit since the launch, hopefully there's some more stuff on the horizon. But as for my overall thoughts, lately I've been an avid casual fan of the game. That's kind of contradictory, I know, but it's something that I've been playing Battlefield a lot in my spare time here whenever I'm not necessarily grinding COD or doing something for content itself. I've been playing a lot in the last few months here, really starting to enjoy the large scale combat and gunplay play again and honestly I was just really excited to jump in and actually play season five here with the launch of it I kind of came to Battlefield 2042 again right before season four I want to say and at that point mentally I wasn't really like I want to put up other games on the channel because I was kind of hoping that we'd get somewhere with Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 in regards to some turnaround for community sentiment but I mean honestly I'm just really enjoying uploading different games and not just Call of Duty every day so it's definitely nice to be able to jump into that stuff but season five being able to cover a launch here really excited for that this is the first one that we'll be able to do since well the launch and the beta of battlefield 2042 that we last touched on with like sort of large launches here with that but playing on mouse and keys again definitely nice to be feeling that again the season five content offering was a lot of fun for what we played with it and honestly i think when we take a look at again where battlefield 2042 was at its launch to where it is now i think it's in a much better place maybe that's just subjective and you could totally disagree and that's totally fine if you do but i think that from where we were at the launch of Battlefield 2042 to where we are now with Season 5 and the sort of, again, open door of what the future could hold. I'm actually kind of excited to jump in here at this and grind out some of what's on offer with this new season and beyond. Like, I'm looking forward to jumping into it here and hopefully you guys are cool with some more Battlefield content because if we can work it in some way, I'll definitely be wanting to. But honestly, liked what I saw out of Season 5 and that's what we have on offer. If you guys didn't like it, that's totally cool, but just wanted to bring you guys what's new if you want to check it out and jump in for yourself. For now, that's what we're going to call it though. Let me know your thoughts down below. Are you guys looking forward to Battlefield Season 5? Is there anything in particular that stood out to you as a good change, bad change, good weapon, good map, bad map, bad weapon, whatever the case, drop your thoughts below. Again, thanks to EA for the opportunity here to capture the content early, but beyond that, let me know your thoughts down below, drop a like on the video, and subscribe if you're new. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care, and peace.